Oké. Okay. Um, my name is uh, Sietske, Sietske Klooster. And uh, V2 invited me to tell a bit about uh, the Touch Me There installation. Now the thing is, I'm not the designer of the Touch Me There installation. Uh, I initiated and coached the project, but it's actually a student's project and therefore I, I would like to give the word later on to uh, Rob Tiebe and Koen van Boerdonk who really designed this installation. Um, okay, so what will I tell? I will tell a bit about the background of the project and um, then Rob and Koen will present more about the content and look at the project from a multimodal perspective. Um, okay, the background. This project uh, started um, uh, based on a project that I um, initiated for uh, as a teaching project. Um, I teach in Eindhoven based on my own design approach, which I call choreography of, in choreography of interaction. I always fall over the words myself, but anyway. <laughs> um, uh, I teach this um, way of working uh, through projects, and uh, in 2006, two years ago, I um, asked students to design um, a meeting duet. And what I asked them is um, to design a meeting activity on the Lowlands Festival. That was the first step to do, and that's also what I do in my way of working. I first design activities. Um, and I then asked them to design a, a product that uh, elicits this activity. Um, what did the students do with this? Um, Rob and Koen and some of the other students in this project decided to um, want to challenge people into um, a duet of touching each other and hence get to know each other better. So people on Lowlands don't know each other and this would be an opportunity to get to know each other by touching each other. Um, and what the students want is, wanted is that this touching would be a dynamic way of touching each other. So they wanted people to explore a dynamic way of touching each other. Um, then the, the question was how to uh, uh, elicit people to do this. And that was the moment where um, uh, the product came into play and they, start, they started to design a product. And this product is what we will tell about in this uh, presentation. Um, the students designed a flexible screen and this flexible screen that can measure the touch, the way people touch each other through this screen. And um, then the touch that is measured is translated into a musical composition. So the idea is that then the musical composition reflects the touch and then motivates people to explore this touching each other. Um, after one semester, about half a year, uh, the project ended and they ended up with a concept and a first uh, model of it. And um, since this was a very interesting concept, we um, in the research uh, department, the depart so we are part of industrial design and we have a research part, educational part. In the research uh, part, we were interested to further develop this uh, concept. And also from the side of Lowlands, they were interested to really see if this concept could be developed into an installation that could be implemented on Lowlands. Um, so over the last year, we further developed this project. Rob and Kuhn did an internship. And it was indeed implemented on the Lowlands Festival. Um, what, we t what we tell here uh, is more from the multimodal perspective of this project. So how to... Um, um, map touch with sound so that you really get the feeling of um, having of, of hearing the music of touching each other and to how this can stimulate this uh, uh, exploration in touch. Um, so Rob and Koen will tell a bit more about that, how we did this through a range of iterations. First Koen will come forward then. Okay, hello. Uh, first, I will show you a little movie to explain our concept so it's easier for you to understand. Yes, it starts. Okay, uh, this uh, video shows the main concept of the Touch Me There project. Uh, it's a screen in the middle and people touch each other through the screen and then they will create music. And this music uh, should motivate people to touch uh, through the screen because else nobody will do it.
So that is the concept. I hope you get it. <laughs> so in this movie, uh, 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 the screen was not uh, working yet. It was just uh, sounds were implemented later on in the movie. But just to give you an idea. Okay, so here you see the concept uh, again. We uh, are touching the screen, and the screen uh, has a certain sensory input. We, we have these touch variables uh, we can measure with the screen. The screen yes, it has its sensor system that uh, creates this input and get, create the output of a musical composition. And this musical composition should ref, uh, motivate people to, um, to, to get into this movement. And uh, in this way, we search for uh, a unity in touch and uh, musical reflection. So it's a certain loop because also the music reflect of a, um, also the music influences who, how people move. And we, in this, we search for uh, this unity uh, with a clear uh, coupling between the touch and the sound. Therefore, we, this is our first iteration. Uh, we created this screen. Um, and this has uh, 18 sensors in implemented in it. So this is, uh, can be seen from the inside. This, these are all the, the sensors in the screen. Every sensor has its own uh, music sample attached to it. So, for exam example, uh, one is the bass, one is the guitar. So, and together they create a whole song. Uh, at the moment uh, that a sample is touched, uh, a music sample will be played, and in this case, it's unmuted. And um, we want people to make this music uh, through this uh, body contact, and we wanted to elicit more and more body contact. So. They could uh, play if they increase their body contact. They will play more samples, so they will increase their their output. But there's also with the intensity of the the meeting with the other person. Dave, <laughs> phone. So the red uh, blocks are the, the ones that are uh, at the uh, touch. This we tested with uh, with users in a use test, and um, yeah, we want them to move and vary, vary their body contact to uh, create different music, so they can vary the music by varying their body contact. So uh, let's see how they do. You can see in this movie, not really much music is created because all these, there are just a few sensors in the screen and they have to search for it and then they also have to uh, push it together from two sides. And we didn't explain how it works, so they're really uh, trying to figure out what does this product do and sometimes they just accidentally uh, touch each other and then if they were in the right place they could hear a music sample, but often they did. So. In, in this movie, you can see the focus was too much on the screen and people trying to find out how this product worked uh, instead of focusing on the other person, which was our goal, because we wanted to create this meeting, this uh, uh, intensity of touch, and that should be motivated by music and not uh, creating music, because that's what they were uh, trying now. Uh, therefore, we uh, created this screen, and Rob will tell something about that. Hi. So as you just saw in this first screen, the problem was really people 
didn't touch each other or when they touched each other, nothing happened. So what we decided was in this new screen to yeah, put totally fill it with sensors. So we created 120 sensors on each side, 20 by 20 centimeters. So if people touch each other, we can always measure that and we can do something with that. We could program that in any way we wanted. So we, um, yeah, we coded that in two different ways of interaction. Uh, in the first way, so this is the sensor grid from the software. Um, if people touch each other from both of the screen from both sides at a certain place, a music sample would start playing. Then if they would move together, the sample would change. So it would change to a different uh, sample in the same collection. So for example, a bass line, and then if they move, it changes to a bass line with a little bleep, bleep, bleep or something between it. If you let it go again, the music fades out. And if people make a new touch point, so for example here and here, you get two different music samples. I'll show a little simplified version of that to explain it. Yeah, just one touch, a music sample. People go down. So you get another sample. the more shared body contact, the louder the music. In a second interaction that we coded, um, the touching was the same, so if you touch each other at a, at a certain place, a music sample would start, but this time it would be, uh, the position would determine its balance, so if you would move from left to right, the, the balance of that sample would also change. Also in this interaction, the size of a contact area would determine its, its volume, so if you just touch with hands, you have a very soft sample, if you use your whole, yeah, half of your body, it would be a very loud music sample. <laughs> so that is... Well, with those two interactions, we ran a rather big user test to find the differences between the interactions and to find out how people interact with the screen. This is a movie of that. And what you see here, people do touch each other, they are creating music and you have quite some parallel movement, so that's a good part. And this is also what we really, really wanted to, to increase the body contact, to get strangers to touch each other in a different way than you normally do, without a handshake or something. Well, so the the, the, the social focus was much better in this version because people were really focused on each other. They were touching together, stroking, discovering the screen. However, in both the interactions, there was no difference in the dynamics of movement. So people did it move differently with different interactions, and it was yeah, we expected that people would behave different. Also, people did not they knew that they were creating the music, but they had no idea how exactly or what they could do or should do in order to change it. So at the moment we're still reflecting on this for a next iteration. Perhaps it's the size of the sensors. They are now 20 by 20 centimeters. Uh, human movements are sometimes qu quite small and dense. So perhaps that's one of the problems. Another possible cause could be that the variations of the samples is 
yeah, not changeable enough. People do not know that a sample change is that they do it. Um, the, the, the relation between the touch and the music is also difficult. If you move to the right and the balance changes, that's one way of translating it. But yeah, people just didn't seem to understand how they were creating music, so that's what we're still working and searching for. Um, yeah, the screen was also further developed for the Lowlands Festival. We had a couple of DJs who made different music collection sets to create different ambiances. And yeah, it has been on the Lowlands Festival for three days with a lot of people in a lot of different conditions, of course, on such a festival. You saw here as well people, well, most of the people were just touching each other and they discovered a good excuse to go and touch other people. But most of the time they didn't know who was on the other side, so that gave quite some unusual meetings, and that was one of the goals as well. Um, but again, we saw the same issues here. People did not know how to create the music exactly. Some of them even didn't notice that they were creating the music. They thought that the music just stopped as they walked, yeah, walked away. So that shows that for some reason people do not understand yeah, how to create this music or so that yeah, we still have lots to do. And I think we will yeah, continue on that matter. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, what we did discover, we, we have been working now for, uh, for two years on this. And, and I think Rob and Kuhn really did hard work last year, very much work. But at the same time, we just now discover that we're just at the start of a project because this relating of, of touch and music um, is something that, inco that involves very many different aspects um, uh, to know about, to have experience uh, in, to have experienced people in music, in how people feel a touch and can, can change it, etc., etc. Um, so um, this is work in progress, and we're now looking for um, ways to continue it. Um, we're very much um, looking at how we could play, for example, with the resolution of the sensors, so what, what um, uh, Rob says. Um, but also looking at which m music variables are dominant over the others, because right now we worked with samples, and of course um, within the samples you have many variables that, that cannot be manipulated, and it seems that they overrule um, the, the variables that can be manipulated. Maybe that's why people don't hear what they are doing and what is part of the samples. Um, so, and... Um, uh, we, we're also looking at, because it's a synesthesia issue, what is, this, what is the sound of touch? You can make many different um, programs of this to just find out which part works better than the other part and to get, an, get a feeling on that. Um, and another issue, of course, is, and you could see it in the Lowlands um, uh, film, is that the affordance of the screen itself is it's very much of a trampoline. We made it heavy and, and hüftig uh, proof, so to say. Um, but of course, it therefore is not about stroking, and this, this sounds quite logical, of course, but that's something to study, how you can balance that. Um, so this is a uh, work in progress, and um, if you have questions, suggestions, we're welcome or ready to answer or <laughs> hear your suggestions. Okay. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, could it be transparent? The, the That's the first question that people ask. <laughs> um, we want to focus people on touching, so we excluded the, or we, the students excluded vision because um, they wanted people to really concentrate on um, the feeling of touch and to not have um, what, what you call visual prejudice. So really, you don't know who is behind that, but you find out by touching what his or her behavior is and how you react to each other. Um, so really focusing on that, that's why. Yeah. 
Does it need to be touched on both sides to actually make the sound, or is it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's really, it's not that people have to touch the screen, but it's really touching each other through the screen. And that is measured if they are touching each other, yeah. Uh, to, uh, to follow up on the previous question, did you ever try it with, with a see-through through screen? Um, right now it's not possible because the, the, the sensors, sensors yeah, are <laughs> blocking it also. So we didn't, but we, what we did try is, um, and, and that relates a little bit to vision. Right now it's a quite thick screen and actually it's too thick uh, because of the, uh, the, the technology where we are working with uh, right now. Um, and uh, the initial, initial um, idea was a simple screen with no sensor in it, in it but yeah, you you did it with uh, uh, your other student, uh, just feeling each other with having the sheet so you can see the impression very much on both sides. So and that, that was very inviting because that is myst mysterious and you can feel each other and that's, so we would like to go there also, but that's something to Okay, develop. I think there's, there's uh, a couple of people in this space as well that, that work with uh, wearable technology that actually could do what you're hoping for, yeah. in terms of the flexibility of the yeah. of the screen. So, mm -hmm. is anyone uh, that wants to react on that? Uh, maybe Stock or Simon, if they're here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was thinking in terms of the sensors that you used in the Soften project. Yes. Would that be something to use? Yeah. Okay. It's um, an an issue with. Yeah, if you want to sense the actual pressure, how hard is being pushed, then you need something that can actually be pushed, something that has a thickness, and then you can measure the change of that thickness. Yeah, yeah, and that's the also thinner it becomes, the more the less sensitive the sensor will be. Yeah, and that's about how hard you push. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? Uh, you said you were a designer, but I don't see exactly see the design thing in it. Ah. <laughs> so. Uh, okay. Where is it? In in this uh, yes. in this uh, in this uh, installation. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a good question. Now it depends on how you how you look at design. In in Eindhoven, we are doing industrial design, and we're trying to. Um, uh, create interactive products that are hi highly behavioral and have uh, interaction possibilities um, uh, that are much into the interaction, the form of interaction. Okay, <laughs> it's going out. Um, so this means that the, um, uh, the design of the product is very much focused on the form of interaction that people can have with it. So that, that means that, that the, the um, uh, um, the way the product looks is not the prior focus in the in the start. Yeah. I understand. One more question in the back. Well, it's not really a question. It's something that I feel. Um, I was asking myself, what is it I want to do with this product if I'll find something like this in front of me? And the, the answer of myself will be that I want, I want to go inside a room that is quiet, um, maybe a white room, and the screen will be there, and maybe someone will tell me that this, this something is going to happen now. There's going to be another person. Someone is going to explain me a little bit of what is going to happen. Maybe someone will close my eyes or put a blindfold on me, yeah. and I'll go be quiet, no, no party around, or, and I'll, I'll know to use... I'll feel to use my body to be more quiet, kind of more, let's, let's create something, the vibe. Yeah. So maybe... Yeah, that, that, maybe that relates work, to know, the context see. where you put this screen and how you... Exactly. That's what you mean, huh? Eh? Yeah. yeah, indeed. Yeah, the, um, um, uh, that's also what we thought about. Right now, it was in, on Lowlands, it was displayed in the, in the Groos uh, um, room which is very much of a place where people drink and have fun. Um, and um, um, originally we didn't, or we, I didn't design it, but the students designed it really to actually be outside. Um, and, it beca it, and in the end was put in the hall stand because of, uh, wait it now. <laughs> the wind and the, the 
yeah, different, different pra practical conditions because of the development. But it actually should have been on a place where it's more quiet and people are more in a relaxed um, situation and then start to explore. I think it will be, now I'm thinking again about it, and I think it will be, it's difficult for a person to go into a wall and to start trying to touch it, even though he knows there's another person on the other side. I think if blindfolded, so you yeah, don't feel like one. blank, you're on the wall, what yeah. do you do? Yeah. But if you're blindfolded, so you can start to use exactly what it is that you want to use, which is the touch. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's what I... Yeah. Okay, so one okay. more question here, just now. Yes, I was wondering, did you ever use headphones, like like real headphones, which you use, for example, with when you're making a film? Like no, but that's a thought for a next step. We right now wanted to um, to have the musical output also to be heard to the audience that is around, really to have an event where people gather around. And um, But having a headphone would be also in another context, maybe a little bit like this isolated room which uh, the other person was talking about. And that's, that's very interesting because that also brings you into a very concentrated own space. But that's, uh, yeah, that would be another direction. And something yeah. with light, I think it would be very good as well, like what, what you said, like when you isolate, especially if you use, for example, light or something, then you can, um, how more you touch, how more you see, and mm -hmm. how more silhouettes you see from the other yeah. side or something. Yeah, like that's that. also, uh, that, that was also one of the, uh, because when, because at first was the idea of making people touch each other and then having a means to do so, and, and the music was one of the things they chose, and Visual things could have been one also, but <laughs> there's many ways of doing it. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I think uh, we should move on to uh, Cecil's presentation. Okay. Thank you.